Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another Gaming Palooza review. It is I, the Wrestle Vessel, hosting this review. And uh, I came up with my own unique concept, and the Aftershock has some thoughts about this as well. So today we're going to bring you The Lost Art of the Arcade. The amazing discovery of arcades began way back in the 1920s. During that time, they were known as Midway Games, and they were located in amusement parks such as Coney Island. And most of these games were shooting galleries and ball tossing games. During the 1930s, pinball was introduced for the first time. This also introduced coin operation into the arcades. All these pinball machines were designed with wood instead of materials used in future pinball games. Pinball dominated the arcade for years, and then all of a sudden Sega came along in the late 1960s and introduced a brand new style of arcade games, electro-mechanical games. In 1966, Sega delivered this strange machine known as Periscope into the arcades. This was an early light gun shooter and also a submarine simulator. Soon after Sega released the Periscope, more of these newly introduced arcade games followed. Taito introduced a two-player sports game, Crown Soccer Special, in 1967, and by 1969, Sega once again released a new mechanical game of their own, the first Duck Hunt. <laughs> Let's go shoot those ducks like, just like in Mario. I bet not too many people knew that Sega came up with the first Duck Hunt game, instead of Nintendo. While these games were great, in 1972, Atari made the biggest impact of all time in the arcades. For the first time, we have a screen with a cabinet. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the ninth wonder of the world. No, it's not China. It's Atari Pong. As soon as this game was released, everything shifted towards making things brand new games, which are shown on screens built into arcade cabinets, which led to the golden age of the arcades. Now I just talked about that golden age, and this is you know what I'm familiar with, what the Aftershocks are familiar with, is what we grew up with. Years after Pong, many games were released in the same fashion, screen and cabinet. Back in 1978, Taito's Space Invaders was considered the first major blockbuster in the arcade video game industry. And this is where the golden age began. Soon after, we had an impressive amount of arcade games introduced to the arcade, such as Galaxine in 1979, Pac-Man in 1980, Battlezone in 1980, Donkey Kong in 1981, and this is only just the beginning. These games were very competitive, featuring scoreboards and official high score contests, and it still exists till this very day. By 1981, we had Pac-Man fever, and we had arcades rising higher and higher than ever, to the point where the video game industry was worth $8 billion in 1981. These arcade games also inspired the creation of home video game consoles. It gives us the ability to play them at home. A revolution era began inside the arcades, featuring more revolutionary arcade games. By the late 1980s, we started seeing more graphical, better sound, and unbelievable action-packed arcade games such as 1943, Afterburner, Contra, Double Dragon, Final Fight, Golden Axe, Quake 
Ghouls and Ghosts. And even WWF Superstars. However, the Revolution Era wasn't fully etched in stone until around 1991 when Street Fighter II was released. That game was the poster child of Revolution Era. During this era, we had many great games such as WWF WrestleFest, NBA Jam, he jams it in, he's on fire, that game was amazing. Mortal Kombat, Virtual Cop, House of the Dead, Virtual Fighter, Ridge Racer, Daytona USA, Cruising USA, The Simpsons game, Tekken, and so many other great games. During the Revolution Era, fully 3D rendered arcade games were introduced and they look great during the time. And they're very fun to play all these games. They still look good even today. In some sections of the city, uh, we have a machine or two machines and sometimes three machines in virtually every single corner store in a neighborhood. City officials today announced that video games no longer will be licensed in residential areas, only in commercial and industrial neighborhoods. Officials say they are responding to complaints from parents that children have skipped school or stolen money to play the games and made a nuisance of themselves. Senior citizens have rights. They have rights to go into the laundromat and wash the, the laundry in peace. They don't have to go buy two or three machines or kids congregating and passing fast remarks as they walk in and terrorizing them in some instances as they go in. Under the new regulations, licenses for about half the video games already in Boston are unlikely to be renewed, including those in the basement of the South Boston Martial Arts Academy. The reason um, we requested to have video games is so we could bring in extra money so we could allow those kids that are out in our neighborhoods that can't afford to come. When they don't have something to do, when they're walking the streets, that's when problems are created, not because of machines. The lack of machines causes problems. You're always talking about this demeaning kid, uh, making kids' minds like vegetables. Talk about them out on the streets, smoking pot. One MIT study of more than 800 video game players found no basis in fact for an underlying fear expressed by parents during public hearings that video games lead to violence. Though a conclusive study has yet to be conducted, Boston went ahead with its restrictive rules. The industry plans to fight City Hall in court. There have been skirmishes before as smaller communities acted, but now a full-scale battle has been joined between the video game industry and its opponents. Steve Young, CBS News. It appeared that arcades were becoming better and better, and then all of a sudden they disappeared from many places during the early 2000s. It's a real damn shame because even in the 2000s we had great arcade games still being released such as OutRun 2, Soul Calibur, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Jurassic Park 3, Ikaruga, Hyper Street Fighter 2, House of the Dead 3, Giga Wing 2, Dead or Alive 2, Daytona USA 2001, and there were plenty of great games during the 2000s. However, arcades simply just disappeared in most places. Perhaps arcades were not worth as much as they were during the Golden Ages, or perhaps too many gamers invested in home gaming consoles, and the arcades became less and less populated. Some areas shut down arcades due to the fact that there were bad crowds always hanging around, probably selling drugs or causing problems. It's a real damn shame because the best hangout spot was probably the arcades if you were a gamer. Now, I'm going to talk about some of my memories of as a, a gamer and playing arcades. You know, I was born in uh, December 1986, so I'm more familiar with the arcades in the 90s and the 2000s. I grew up as a kid, and arcades, they were a lot, a lot of fun. They were all over the place. I mean, you could play them... First of all, I had down the shore, I would go to the boardwalk or local restaurants or, um, you know, even had it in like bowling alleys. 
Like, I had this restaurant called, um, The Ground Round in my area. It was like a restaurant and bar grill place. They had like a lot of great arcade games there. They had like the Street Fighter game that had Mortal Kombat. They had that little, um, you know that bowling game where you slide the little thing across and hit the pins like inside the bar and they had that. Um, I had this awesome arcade in my area in Paramus, New Jersey called Sports World Amusement Park. If you search it, you may find some classic commercials of it. It was a place that had like indoor rides and games. I remember you used to play you know, that shooting, moving basketball game. They had like uh, the batting cages where you swing the bat and it simulates your motion. They had a lot of other great games like Simpsons, WrestleFest, uh, the Daytona game where you spin the steering wheel, the Jurassic Park game, the, the Golden Axe was there. They had just had so many freaking great games. I really miss Sports World. It randomly shut down around 2005 or 2006 because uh, it became a furniture store. I don't know why. It really did good business. I guess because like, Aftershock said, maybe the bad crowds are coming around and selling drugs and doing things like that. Maybe the owners just wanted to get out. I'm also guessing, you know, the arcades went down because, you know, a lot of people want to play the home game entertainment systems or play online. You know, a lot of people, they don't socialize these days. They just text, they play on their cell phones. They don't really want to go out or do anything. Just like as you see, like, you know, the basketball courts are thinning. It's a more older crowd, it's not really the younger people. People really don't go outside and play much. Just like they don't want to go out in the arcade. They just want to play in their own home, from the comfort of their own living room. Uh, they want to play on a computer screen. But man, the arcades were freaking awesome. I mean, playing WrestleFest, I mean, you're just eating up all the quarters, trying to get up to Demolit, trying to get to Legion of Doom, and just taking your two guys or fighting the Rumble match. Uh, air Hockey. Whoever played members play Air Hockey in arcade. That's awesome. Or the uh, the shooting sniper games. You go after people and stuff. There's just so much to do in an arcade. And I really miss Sports World. I miss the lost art of the arcade. This is the Wrestle Vessel reporting. I'm sure Aftershock will share his memories as well. And, um, you know, my favorite arcade game probably is WrestleFest, but there's just so much out there to do inside an arcade that overall I just I just missed the whole concept, period. This is the WrestleVessel reporting. Take it away, Aftershock. Tell us about your memories inside the arcade. Thank you, WrestleVessel. So far, we had a great program. So my memories on the arcade, I was born in 1986. I grew up in Connecticut. And all throughout the 90s and 80s, there was arcades present in several areas where I lived in Connecticut, which was in Meriden. And we had an arcade inside the mall, which was small. But we also had um, an arcade that was built, built right next to a Burger King. And the Burger King was very, very huge. And I actually uh, came across some pictures of this, because I'm pretty sure some people were familiar with this. But it was also... Um, known as Jester's Courtyard Playland Arcade. And just like down in New Jersey, Wrestle Vessel played WrestleFest. I also played WrestleFest and the Real Rumble Pinball Machine, which is exactly probably what he was talking about. No matter where you are, I want you to share your memories if you will. Tell me about your favorite arcade game and what arcade games you used to play. We have some breaking news if you are familiar with other gaming reviewers. Gavite, a European gaming reviewer, has joined Gaming Palooza and will lead Gaming Palooza's very first European branch. Congratulations to Gavite and our European viewers. I suggest you check out his channel because he has some pretty good gaming videos. Atari Jaguar and even Pokemon cards. Uh, Sega Saturn will be added soon to the website. We also have an arcade section where you can play flash games complete with the universal chip, which means that if you're in one game and somebody else is in another game, you can still chat to each other, which is pretty cool. There's also a forum where you can start any topic you want, make any comments you want, entertainment, sports, wrestling, gaming, you name it. Hey look. We even got free full WWE pay-per-views on our Game Inclusive form. How cool is that? You want to check out our website, make sure you go there. You can post comments, write anything in the form, invite your friends, take the form over if you want, because the form needs a lot of people. So uh, check it out and enjoy the website. There will be a lot more added to it soon. <laughs> 